everyone, it's Mary and in this video we'll talk about the books that I read uh, in the month of December 2017 and in January 2018. So let's start with the book with the lowest rating, uh, which is not a rating at all because I DNF'd this book. I decided, I initially gave it um, a rating because I read uh, quite a big chunk of it, but then I decided that I don't want to rate books that I don't finish. Uh, it's just a personal preference, but anyway. The book is The Unit by Nini Hogvist, and I read this book, well, I kind of almost read this book. Well, I was halfway through when I DNF'd it um, for the Tales & Co book club that I'm a part of. Um, I will link down below the details of the book club, but it is hosted by Yamini over at The Skeptical Reader, and um, this was the pick for Women in Translation, I think, I believe. It's been a while. It, it was the November pick, and it's a Swedish author and a Swedish book. This is set in a kind of dystopian future um, in which women over 50 and men over 60 that are not like useful for the community, like they don't have a job that is, let's say, a doctor or something, you know, that helps the community and they don't have children, they kind of are considered as disposable and are uh, put together in a institution that is called the unit. And in this institution they will gradually donate all their organs or be part of kind of experiments, uh, physical, both physical and social, and uh, until the day that they will die. This unit is very, it is a very comfortable space in which they can interact, they have all the comforts, and the, our protagonist just kind of arrives in this unit knowing, you know, what, what she's going to go through, and uh, actually starts to, I think, fall in love, and this kind of puts some doubts in her and about her future, so... I did not like this book, um, apart from the fact that the premise of this book really reminds me of a book that I really really love and that I cannot talk about because telling you what the other book is will spoil the other book for you since the catch, let's say, of the entire story is discovered later on in the story in that, you know, particular book. But if you read the book that I'm not mentioning, you would know what I'm talking about. But um, apart from that and the fact that that book was written before this one, that really initially put me off, but it was not the main problem that I had with this book. My problem was with the prose and how the characters were portrayed. They did not have a very um, distinctive trait about themselves. They were all very interchangeable and even our protagonist, I could not really relate to her because she seemed um, like her emotions seemed to go from all over the place to kind of apathetic and that was not very predictable or just it didn't make any sense basically and also the premise you know of, of the entire thing like how this society came to be uh, you know uh, this way why do they need to have this disposable people there and you know what, what happened how that society is different from our own because when they talk about their life before joining the unit, it's you cannot sense any difference really. Everybody is just living their life normally and that's just that's just silly to me. Like if you know that you're going to die and donate your organs, will you live your would you live like your life normally? Would you rush to just have children uh, so that you don't, you know, end up in this unit? Is it okay for you to go there? Are people like more apathetic and uh, condescending towards this kind of destiny, this is not really explored, at, at least not until the midpoint of the book. So yes, I just, I did not like this book at all and I saw that it was not going anywhere that I liked it um, and I DNF'd it, so yes. Then I read another book for another book club, which is the Read Around the World book club, hosted by Mel over at Mel's Bookland Adventures. And in this time we traveled to the Netherlands and we read a middle grade book that was called, that it is called, Against um, the Odds by Marjolie Jean Hoff. This was a very quick read and a very simple read and I don't think it was simplistic because of the target 
audience of the book. I felt like it was very patronizing in the tone and uh, I again did not like this book. I did finish it though. So I rated it I think two stars, I don't remember now, but um, it's the story of Kiki and she is um, a girl in her early teens, I think. And her father just travels to war zones because he is a doctor and um, kind of dedicates his life to, you know, to saving others. And she is very much worried about him. And one time he does not come back as he's supposed to. She starts to ponder about the odds of him coming home. And, you know, it talks a little bit about chance, about fate. But the first part of the novel I felt like it was more consistent and the second part just kind of ruined it for me. There, was, there were some scenes that I really did not like how they were constructed. Overall, I did not find in it a powerful message or any message at all really. It was just very forgettable and very dull. I would not recommend reading this book. On to more pleasant reads. Um, we have first two graphic novels that I read around um, Christmas time. They're both by the same author, that is Car Carly, Carly Bickford Smith, I think. Um, and I'm going in order of publication, but the first is The Fox and the Star. I enjoyed both of these kind of graphic novels really much. Really much? Very much. What, what was that? Um, they were very sweet. They had some like dark parts that were not too dark, you know. Um, I think they're, they're aimed at a younger audience. They are wrapped up so nicely. They're both very similar in theme and in, of course, like a style of the illustrations, but um, such pleasant reads, really. The illustrations are really intertwined with, with words um, in a, you know, in a heavy way. They're very short and I think I read them like in 10 minutes, uh, but they're, they're beautiful and yes, I'm happy to have read them. So this was The Fox and the Star and then we have The Worm and the Bird that came out just recently and again was very sweet and just very beautiful. Very beautiful illustrations. Yes, not, not much to say about these ones, but just very enjoyable. Um, and I gave both four stars. And then on to my five star reads, just to end the video nicely. We have firstly, um, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, And I think, I'm not sure, but I think this was on my five star pile reading whatever prediction video. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I, I ended up giving this five stars. This is just such a wonderful story. Of course, everybody I think knows, you know, what this book is about. I had never read uh, this story before. I just watched the Disney animation movie that, you know, came out when, when I was very young. And then I watched several other adaptations uh, in film form. And yes, I was eager to get to the actual, you know, original source of, of the book. And it's just, so much more than you know than it seems that I remembered really because of the themes that are in this book. I will link a video down below with uh, Jen Campbell explaining um, you know Peter Pan and you know analyzing it in such a brilliant way that really made me um, see uh, with uh, different eyes the story and um, how to approach it really. It, it helped me immensely and it was so interesting to approach this, this book with those things in mind. Uh, it's just so much more than it seems. There's so much packed into this. So many metaphors, so many messages. And it's just, it also kind of was a nostalgic read for me because it really reminded me of when I was, you know, very young and it makes me feel warm inside. And I'm glad I got to read this one. And then the last one was a reread for me. And I remember really enjoying this when I was like eight years old. It was written in 1958. So I did not realize it was that old while I was reading it, but it's Tom's Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce. And this book 
is just so sweet and so good. It's a kind of a middle grade book, I would say. And it's the story of Tom that uh, has to go away from his home for, you know, an indefinite period of time because his brother has measles and he doesn't, you know, his parents don't want him to catch uh, measles as well. So they send him to his aunt and uncle uh, to stay there. There's nothing there to do and there, there is no garden, there is no, you know, other young boys to play with. And so, you know, he's, he's a bit down for this, but once he gets there, he starts to pay attention to um, a grandfather clock that is in the hall that kind of is, is behaving a little bit strangely. Because after 12, the clock just strikes 13. And Tom gets down to see what's happening, and opening the back door, he finds a great wonderful garden. Each night he finds out a little bit more about the garden, about the people that live there, and it's just so wonderful, um, very sweet. And it involves uh, time travel, which is one of my favorite like plot devices ever. So if you enjoy this kind of things and are in the mood for a middle um, grade book, I would definitely recommend this one. It's, it's an old one, but it, it is a great one. So that was it for my December and January wrap up. I hope you enjoyed and let me know of course if you read any of the books that I mentioned, what you thought of them, if you have more suggestions for me. Um, let's just chat in the comments down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!